In this lesson, we're going to run our first program, a Hello World program. It is kind of a first step towards uh, getting a console set up. Now, the code itself is throwaway code. We won't be keeping it for very long. This is how I would start a new project working for a company. And to be clear, I have a number of times started work for a new product using an evaluation board. People sometimes blink an LED as a first program, but as mentioned in a previous lesson, many real-world embedded systems have a console, and I feel we might as well just focus on that. This, war this lesson will mainly be working with the IDE. First, we'll generate the base code and build it. We'll run it on our board using the IDE debugger. Now, this software won't do anything visible, so this is just to check that our development environment is working. By the way, in later lessons, we'll spend quite a bit of time looking at the generated code and, and seeing what is going on behind the scenes when we build code. Next, we'll add a few lines of code to write Hello World to the console. We will use the HAL device library, which we'll talk much more about later. Finally, we will rebuild the modified code and run it on the board, ver verifying the output on the console using PuTTY. So let's get started. So here we are in the device configuration perspective of the IDE. This is pretty much the default pin configuration for the Nucleo board, except as you may remember, I fixed a problem with uh, PB3 in a previous lesson. First, I want to show you some parameters for UART2, which we'll be using for our console. Um, we need this information when setting up PuTTY. So if I go to connectivity, select UART2, and look at the parameters, what we really need to see are these three. The baud rate, which is 115,200. It's eight bits. There is no parity, and there is one stop bit. I would say that almost every serial connection you use um, for consoles and so forth, um, the only thing that will, will differ is the baud rate. It's almost always eight bits, no parity, and one stop bit. So we're going to go with this configuration as is now. So we need to generate the code. Um, that will be run when the MCU starts to initialize the hardware. So we go to project and generate code. I may pause the video um, when this, uh, in case this takes a little while. Now we get this pop-up says, do you want to go to the C, C++ perspective? Um, and we do because once it generates code, there'll be code to look at and that perspective of the IDE would be the natural place to be. So I will say yes. I had paused it just a little bit. It didn't take too long, less than a minute. So now we have the code that uh, has been generated. And so the next step is we want to build it. So we can go to project, uh, build project. And I believe this will be fairly quick. Here, you can look in this console and you can see it uh, building the, compiling the various uh, files. Uh, you might not realize there's so many files. This is the hell library. And so uh, I think I'll just wait, be, wait for it to finish. And it's, it's done now. So now we have generated the code. We've built the code. As part of building the code, it generated an image file that can then be installed into the um, MCU. So now we launch the debugger. Run debug. When you run the debugger for the first time for a project, I think it is just the first time, it will put up the debugger configuration. Um, this window and allow you to change things. There is a lot of stuff here like the type of debugger interface, uh, the image file that needs to be the in, uh, loaded in the MCU, 
whether the debugger should automatically set a breakpoint on some function, and on and on. Fortunately, the defaults work for us, so I'll just say OK and continue on. Now I paused the video a little while it went into the debugger, since it took a little while, maybe 10 or 20 seconds. And along the way, it asked me if I wanted to switch the IDE to the debug perspective, which I did. So that brings us here. The code has been installed into flash memory, and the debugger started the MCU. The MCU ran a small amount of initialization code, enough so that the main C function could be run. This is generated code. The CPU stopped at the start of this main function. It stopped because that was an option on the debug configuration to do that. If we look at this, and so here is a line where it has stopped. If we look at this code, we see some initialization and configuration uh, functions being called, including, interestingly, GPIO init and USART2 init. So I can do a resume and have the code continue uh, running. And it is running now. Uh, there's not much to see because there's no application code. I can now uh, suspend the CPU and it tells, and you can see here it's in this while loop. Um, and that's not surprising because once it did the initialization, it went into the while loop. It has nothing else to do. So we'll be looking at this code and this whole startup process in a future lesson. But we have accomplished what we wanted for now. Our development environment is working fine. So I'll now terminate this debug session. Now I'm going to add code to the infinite loop, um, and that code will write hello world every second. The code is just temporary for us to test our console. You'll notice in this file that there are these comments that say, um, you know, user code begin and user code end. And what those are for, when the, when the IDE regenerates a file, this is a generated file, it will look for code uh, between those comments, and it'll know that that has code that is code that was added by the user, and it needs it it needs to carry it forward to the um, the regenerated file. I don't really like these systems; they make me nervous. But um, we'll talk about that later. Anyhow, I will um, to avoid making any mistakes. I'll cut and paste the code in. And without going into a lot of detail on this code, this first line um, sends data to a UART. This is telling it which UART. This is the actual message, which is text string. This is the length of the message. And this 1000 is a timeout. And then the second function just waits for 1000 milliseconds. Now, because I use this string lang, I need to include a header file. So I'm going to paste that in. And that will go right here. So this time, I'm just going to run the code and not use the debugger. Now, since I've changed a file, the code has to be rebuilt. But I can just do a run in the IDE and it will know it needs to be rebuilt. So let's do that. I'll do a run, a run, and then we can see here down in this lower window a console. It has rebuilt the code. Now what it does is it starts the debugger. It uses the debugger to copy that uh, the code image file into the flash memory and then it shuts down the debugger. And, that, and then the board should be running on its own and should be running that code. So that should be happening, but we need to look at it with a console. So the first thing I would like to do is uh, look in the device manager for, this is Windows, 
And if we go into ports, we see this port called ST Microelectronics ST Link Virtual COM port, COM4. And that's exactly what we're looking for. So now we can bring up PuTTY. And I happen to have a session for the console configuration. So you'll see here it's COM4. Here's the baud rate of 115. If we go to the serial properties, we can also see the data bits of one, the stop bit of one, uh, no parity. Uh, it has flow control X on X off. It doesn't really matter, but that should be none. So I'll change that. Okay, let's open the session. And uh, as we hoped, it is printing uh, Hello World uh, every second. There's a little thing here. I think when we first opened the, this window, there was some glitch and it, and it sort of got messed up. But now it's um, um, printing Hello World. And this is what we expected to see. So we've proved our um, console connection and uh, it's time to move on. So thanks for watching.